Grandparents may get greater access to their grandchildren after parents split up. A review of the family justice system in England and Wales recommends parents should sign an agreement which emphasises the importance of family relationships for a child following a family breakdown. But the review has stopped short of giving grandparents any legal right of access. Zara Pambani is a family lawyer and also speaks on behalf of Resolution, which is an organisation of lawyers who believe in a constructive, non-confrontational approach to family law matters. Uh, she joins us now from our Birmingham uh, newsroom. Good afternoon to you. Um, wh what does today's report actually mean for grandparents? Have they got no legal right? Is it just suggesting that perhaps they should? Well, at the end of the day, I mean, grandparents are very important in the roles of so many children's lives. So what this, the Justice Review, is trying to say is we are not ignoring grandparents. Now, currently, whether you are a grandparent or another person who cares for children and you're not actually the parent, you can actually apply to the court for permission to apply for some rights to have contact or residence of children. So there is a format there, but it's probably not used or publicised widely enough. And I know there are many, many uh, grandparents campaigning for better rights because they are so heavily involved in children's lives. So I think what, what's trying to be done, and, and a resolution, and I would agree with that, is just to show that there are many important people in children's lives and we need to make sure that all the right people get the right access. Because when relationships break down and marriages break down, children aren't divorcing everybody. They need status quo. They need stability. But all the in-laws fall out. Everybody falls out around them. And what this is trying to achieve is to say, if you split up, two people are splitting up. Let's look at the children and let's look at all their relationships in the maternal and paternal um, s surroundings and let's see if we can really hold on to those relationships because that would be in the best interest of the children long term. Of course it, it, it's difficult enough for the grandparents uh, but uh, particularly if the parents uh, don't have an ongoing relationship of some kind particularly with the children in mind. This has been a review of family law, uh, do you think it, it could go a lot further in helping parents maintain a relationship with their child? Because there are some examples of dreadful cases where parents are denied access to their child, not legally, but just by the other parent with the custody. I think there are problems. I mean, this our system isn't perfect and it does need reform and it does need assistance because the modern family is moving and changing regularly and I don't believe the law changes quickly enough with it. But at the end of the day, what is happening now, and you will see there's a heavy focus on media mediation in cases. What, what the, you know, the system is trying to say to families, come on, let's try and communicate and talk and agree things. Because do you really want to go in front of a judge? A judge who's going to look at your case for a day? Do you want them to make the decisions about you and your family? Or do you want to make those decisions? So why don't you take that advice and let's look at mediation. Let's look at parenting agreements. Let's look at a positive way forward. You've got to separate yourself from your problem within your relationship and marriage and focus on children. I think sometimes the adults can be too adult focused and we still see children being used as pawns and really this has all got to be very children focused. Indeed. Uh, Sarah Babani, family lawyer, many thanks uh, for your insight.